Hey there. While we're on the topic of touch lamps, out of pure coincidence, somebody gave me a touch lamp controller to repair, which consists of this little module with the electronics in it. Fits over a standard US plug. And uh, it has a sense line coming out here running to a gigantic capacitor plate inside here. It's probably connected to a capacitor, maybe one nanofarad or similar. So when you touch this, it slows the discharge rate of the capacitor slightly, just enough you can measure it reliably. And toggles the light on or off. Some will vary the brightness depending on how long you hold it. But anyway, the only problem with this one, I believe, is that this wire is garbage. I would guess this is 26 gauge wire and it's solid and very brittle. See, so just moving that back and forth three or four times right there has weakened it enough that it's going to break. If it wasn't coated in rubber, it would have broken by now. So, I'm going to toss that wire out and replace it with a better wire. Stranded copper wire. Now you have to understand you might run into a situation where you've altered the uh, mass just enough to have the thing false trigger. So you need to keep the line about the same thickness. You know, so that stick around 26 gauge, I think. So I think I have some stranded copper wire that's about that gauge. So now we need to get the bottom off. I've removed the screw, and I can see that there are some releases here. Looks like that's a release. And that, and there's two over here. There's the top and bottom. Put that over to the side. Don't need that for right now. So we got this junk going through here and I'm going to cut that off, toss that to the scrap metal. And now we've just got a little pigtail. It looks like we've got some plastic junk in here. I'm just going to pull it out. I don't want it over my solder connection. I don't want to pull out too much because it looks like it might be holding the solder connection to the metal plate. So, clean that up a little bit. Kind of like that. So let's get our vise out here. Gently tighten that down. Desoldering tool. Clean iron, very important, clean the iron right before you use it, and I mean like two seconds before you use it, not two minutes before you use it. So I'm going to tend this a little bit with some solder just to get it, you know, flowing, and then very gently this up, pull the wire out, here's the wire. Now 
now I'm going to use my desoldering tool here very briefly suck that up so now I've got a hole completely through the board like I should for a wire and going to film this wire here Again, 26 gauge. I believe it's some sort of intercom cable. I stripped it out of the jacket, just exposing a single conductor and pulled that conductor loose from the rest. Cut that off so it's square. Now, I want to build up just a little bit of strength in this end here. So I've got one piece of heat shrink that just fits over the wire. And on this end of the wire, I'm going to slip it over, leave a couple inches of wire. So the heat shrink is here. That's the end. Now I'm going to do that so I can reinforce it through this board. So I want the heat shrink contacting the board so the wire is not rubbing against the board because we have 110 volts. About 2 millimeters away from this wire and that is the last thing we want to send down that wire. So I'm going to torch here. I think that's important. The all important torch for your heat shrink tubing. You can use a lighter, but it'll burn it up. You can use a match, but it'll set it on fire. The torch won't catch it on fire unless you go crazy. So now I've got that piece of heat shrink locked in there. So now we need to feed this back through this hole in the bottom and the heat shrink tubing right there is going to end up lined up through this board so it's laying next to the 120 volt connector there that way it just got a little bit of extra insulation between us and any of the mains and then we want to take this and tie a knot at the very top of the heat shrink tubing. Not sure that's big enough. Yeah, that's fine. So now, being at the top of the heat shrink tubing, no matter how much we pull it, we're never going to have exposed on the trace side of this board anything but the heat shrink tubing. So it comes right to the edge of the board. Okay, so now I got that pulled tight. We just need to uh, measure, loop it over. And measure, trim it off so it's just the right length, not any longer. Strip it. And use this again to hold it just so I have a, both hands on the iron. Clean the tip as always and heat one side of the wire and touch the solder to the wire, not the soldering iron. That way you're soldering the wire and you're not soldering the iron. I'll flip it over, poke the wire through the hole. See in here it's got a, uh, very gently, this one's got a uh, Two point two nanofarad capacitor in it. This is a two point two nanofarad capacitor compared to the circuit that I built that has a one nanofarad. 
Same thing. You know, whatever. Doesn't matter. Much anyway. Let's tack that in place. Quickly. Not wasting time. And trim that. So you've got a nice clean solder joint. We'll pull it back through and there you go. Now we can uh, mount this back in its housing. The wire coming out that side. So yeah, you'll pull it back over that lead. Then this just fits over like that. And we'll snap back together. I'm done with that for a moment. Screw back in. I'm not going to even bother to test this. It's not a big deal. So now we need to do this and again this feeds through a hole so I'm going to take an extra long piece of this heat shrink here. Same thing that I did earlier. Leave about two inches of wire hanging off the end. Like that. So the end of the tubing's here. Heat shrink tubing's there. This piece. Again, torch. Kind of running low on fuel on my torch, I see. But, uh, there's that. Now I'm not going to do this one yet. I'm going to run that whole thing through and again going to tie a knot at the very top of the heat shrink. So the heat shrink is inside the knot. Just inside the knot. Okay, so insulated wire coming out of the top, heat shrink coming out of the bottom of that knot. And that heat shrink is going to poke back through, and that's going to be a strain relief on that because this is what broke the last time. This piece right here broke. So I want to try to prevent that in the future with that little bit there. So I don't need much here. I'm going to have a little extra though. So, because I have some room to curl it up and tuck it in, and when I put the hot glue over it, it'll be just fine. Quite get that. Okay. Now I'm going to use tweezers. Um, to bend this. And then trim the tinning off the wire. Turn the wire back just a touch. Now the trick here is going to be to do this very quickly, as always without burning any plastic only getting metal so this is a big piece of metal so it's going to take a minute to heat up that's every moment it takes to heat up or it's going to just be really stubborn sometimes and uh, in those situations solder flux. It's nasty stuff. It's generally made out of tree resin, pine trees. So literally it's pine tree sap. Just uh, dab some on there. And let's see if that helps. Sometimes that will get the uh, solder moving. Hear 
sizzling it's the rosin vaporizing there we go so looks like we're ready go with that So I think that looks pretty good. So I guess we should test this. Huh? So I got an AC voltmeter here. Gently sort of insert that into the wall plug thingy. So yeah. Look at that. This is a dimmer. Wow. So that's what we got. Off. Low, which looks like about 85 volts. 95 volts. 115 volts or so. And off. Neat. So it works. Yay. think we're done here. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed.